you hear a lot from people who you wrote a book called The Skeptical Vegan. You hear a lot from skeptical people who, yeah. s- who will fight you on the fact that it's easy to go vegan because that's one of your premises is that it's not that anyone can do it. So if I could ask you a few questions and what your response is, because it would help our listeners who are vegan to talk to, to their friends who all, sure. uh, offer up, uh, non-vegan friends who offer up these excuses. So what about, um, uh, I live in a place, I live in the Midwest, I live in the South, there's no vegan food there. What do you yeah. say to folks? <laughs> well, again, while Cornell University is here in Ithaca, New York, you know, middle of nowhere, uh, we don't have a Whole Foods. We don't have a Trader Joe's. We don't have a Costco. You know, I'm seeing all these Costco people coming, filling their trucks with all this Beyond Burgers. They're getting a Costco now for like a super low price. I'm like, ah, I want a Costco. So <laughs> I kind of live in uh, a middle of nowhere kind of place um, where there aren't a lot of vegan options. We have a co-op. And so a co-op is almost in a lot of, you know, it's in a lot of towns. And so co-ops often cater more toward their members Make sure that you can request items you know, that you're maybe looking for. So if you do truly live uh, somewhere where there aren't options, I would say that that is a, a convenient excuse uh, because you can always shop online. I would say the better excuse is I live in the middle of nowhere and I'm broke. And then it truly becomes a little bit more challenging to just say things like, well, beans and rice aren't expensive, pasta with you know a homemade pesto, I can make a pesto in two minutes in my blender. You can make meals that are affordable and satisfying, but to be like remote and remote in terms of no community around you can be challenging. And so if, I would say that if someone listening is in that situation and they're looking for support, you know, I'd say go on social media to, to, to build a community. I would say do what you can to uh, uh, create these meals that are truly satisfying to you, even if they become sort of regular in your diet. You're saying, hey, I've, e- I've eaten pasta three times this week. That's fine. You know, because if you're, you're doing it for your health, you're doing it for the animals, and you're doing it for the planet. And so it's a small price to pay for the, the upside of the rewards of being vegan. Mm-hmm. So I would say I would say stick to it. And if someone's truly stu- struggling, uh, just reach out to me. I love to be people's mentors. I love to prove to them that they can do it. I want to be there to support them, as you all are. So, yeah, I, I, I wish them well, but I'm luckily not in that situation. I do sympathize with people who do uh, have those challenges ahead of them. I'm with you, though. Honestly, if you buy in bulk and in season mm-hmm. and you're in the middle of nowhere and you're broke, it's very inexpensive. I mean, it can be as inexpensive as the fast food diet, right? And that's why so many people yeah. lean into the drive through right? Because it's like two ninety nine for an entire meal. Um, but if you are dealing with all sorts of legumes and grains and vegetables that are in season, right? That's when they get crazy prices when you're trying to yeah. buy blackberries in December. Like, no, they're going to be $10 for like a little pint. But if you do those things and you have a great spice rack, which spices are not expensive either. Yeah, especially yeah. if you build it up and then they last a long time. Yep. You can do some pretty exquisite cooking mm-hmm. that yeah. is cheap and easy and totally awesomely healthy. And then and that's including no junk food, vegan junk food. Like if you don't, you know, right? Like you're going to be really healthy if you live in the middle of I nowhere know. and you're broke. You're going to be eating whole food, plant based, right? Like you're not going <laughs> to be like, buying yeah. Beyond Burgers. Yeah. Yep. What What do you hear from mostly from people who? resist going vegan what are what are their excuses and what do you say to them especially your friends because you grew up with people half you until your 40s you had a whole clan yeah. of friends who ate carnivore omnivore yeah. and yeah. now here you are do, what do you hear from them to, uh, to be honest again at the age that i'm at right now most of my friends have kids uh you know a couple of kids some of them are already in their teens or older <clears throat> so they see what I'm doing and they want to be a part of it. They know what's right. Some of them are athletes. You know, they, they run not 5Ks. They're bicyclists. They know that their recovery is going to be faster. They've seen it, Dotsy. I mean, they've seen the movie. They, they, they know what they should be doing. But they say, I got the kids to also contend with. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could get my partner to go vegan. They, the challenges that they're facing are more like environmental to them to themselves. The barriers are within their households mm-hmm. in most cases. And so I offer them um, advice on on what they can do to introduce plant-based diets to their family that they don't even know they're eating a plant-based diet. Like I said, you can make an amazing Italian meal. 
uh, Mexican food, like you can put out tacos, no one's going to say, where's the meat? You know, when you have soy chorizo, also from Trader Joe's, that's incredible. Um, so there's things that you can make within your house to get other people on board. And then a lot of these individuals, and I'm trusting them on this, say that they're going to make these changes in the coming years. So they, they know where they're going in terms of their health. They know where they want to go in terms of their diet. They can see the trend um, of you know a whole foods, plant-based or vegan diet, and they want to be a part of it. And so they're, they're waiting for their kids to go away to school or they're waiting for their kids to be less reliant on them feeding them. Mm. So you know it's, it's more like um, if you're single and by yourself, it's a whole different or single with a, with a partner who's also going on the journey with you it'd be a lot easier in that regard than it is trying to like bring the entire family on board. That's something that happened to me. I never had a huge sweet tooth, but I definitely had a sweet tooth. I definitely ate something sweet every night. And after moving over to um, vegan, mostly whole food, plant-based, I don't have a sweet tooth anymore. I mean, yeah. the, just the, so much of those cravings has changed. I think sweet, it tastes so much sweeter than it ever did, right? Because we know yeah. that the meat and the dairy and the saturated fat really deadens um, your taste buds. And so now everything is so much sweeter. So I want an apple more than I yes. want, I don't know, oh some gosh. sort of vegan well, the, dessert even. It's just like, I don't, I don't crave it anymore. The perfect example, and again, I got a lot of flack for this in the second book, because Fruity Pebbles, you know, Barney and Fred right. Flintstone are on the box. Fruity Pebbles are vegan. And I'm like, well, I got to try them. I had them as a kid. So I pour a bowl of Fruity Pebbles. Like even thinking about it right now, is kind of grossing me out. But <laughs> pour a bowl of Fruity Pebbles, and then I pour some almond milk over it. And the first bite tasted like paint. It tasted like yeah. petroleum. It tasted so fake in terms of like, what are they trying to do here? What, what kind of fruit is this supposed to even taste like? Yeah. I couldn't eat it. It was disgusting to me. And so your tastes do change. Mm. You realize that an apple is better, that some apples are even better than other apples. You start to understand what you really crave and what is a delicious dessert? And that brings us back to the whole foods plant-based mm -hmm. diet because you can put together a delicious, like almost like a pudding with a cashew cream and that's going to taste better to you than, you know, frosting from a can. Yes, yes. Where is, uh, so important to ask this, Mike, your partner in meatbucket.com? Is, oh, yeah. is Mike, is Mike vegan-ish <laughs> or is, how? How's his he's not. Okay. He's not. He's, he, he would be, I'm not sure exactly. I don't keep that much in touch with him, okay. but he'd be the furthest from it because he would be the one who would, this is like, this is one of my least favorite parts about being vegan to tell you the truth. And it, it, you touched on this a little bit, Alexander, a minute ago, but when I say I'm vegan and then a friend says, well, that means I'm going to order twice as much pepperoni on my pizza. Mm. I just, it drives me crazy that they're like, oh, you're so like, self which i'm not i don't think self-righteous about what you're doing you're so like vegan 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 that i'm going to be more even anti-vegan than mm -hmm. you and while i don't think he's selling meat in a bucket <laughs> i do think that he's still feeling that way that you know like i'm going to eat what i want to eat and yeah. i can't change people i yeah. mean there's, there's other people in my book who i mentioned where i'm just like i i just have to let them do their thing yeah as much as i don't want to as much as i hate what they're doing I just can't. I don't engage with people. In fact, I'm, you know, again, fairly well known on social media channels and people will try to troll me or, or bump into me and I just won't even engage.